Hello friends, today I'm going to show you an example of Serilog logger to write logs onto a text file and how you can use that. So as you can see, this is my .NET Core application. This is the .NET Core project. So what we did was uh, we created a new project and uh, that's uh, .NET Core MVC. So we have this controllers folder, we have this models folder and the views folder. Uh, let me raise the font size here. Yeah. Okay, so what happened was this home file was the default one. Uh, did we change anything here? No, we did not change anything. Everything is as usual, as default. Okay, so I'm not using a database here. Uh, this is just the uh, simple uh, default files. So no database connections, nothing uh, uh, clumsy in the program.cs, no customization there. What I added here, we added serilog, the normal serilog. Then serilog.syncs.file, uh, whatever the latest version is over here. And I'm using a .NET Core 6, okay? This is version 6. So if you want to see what else are installed here, you can see this. Uh, the installed files are one, uh, the .NET Core dot code generation dot design, and this is uh, 6 because I uh, scaffolded the, the, uh, the action to uh, create a view, the login view. Otherwise, the rest all is same. So we added this one in the controller, in the home controller, we added this one, private read-only iWeb host environment dot web host environment. Okay, this is uh, using the dependency injection. So we initialized here inside the constructor and uh, then we will later be using it. Okay, so we created uh, uh, one login get method and one login post method. What we are using in the post, I'm simply taking the username for log purpose, otherwise nothing else. I'm calling the get IP address, which is passing two variables. That is the username and the login as a text, because this will be created as a uh, as a remark in the notepad. So now what we have is in the get IP address, I'm also receiving those two elements, the username and the session type. Uh, then we have a string variable named hostname2 and dns.get uh, hostname. This is uh, one keyword that we'll be using to get the host name. Uh, this will have your computer name here. IP host, host enter, this will get the list of your IP addresses. Now, what we are going to do is we have two variables which we would be initializing in case we have more than one IP address that is being received. So we will have an integer value to keep account of the number of IP addresses received so that we can cycle through the for each loop and uh, we can take uh, a track of all those IP addresses. Then uh, we're using a ternary operator to add uh, strings to the HH, the string variable, and then we will store all the IP addresses there. And uh, for each IP address, it will keep on adding those things into this HH string uh, using the ternary operator. If it's more than zero, then it will uh, add a comma and it will keep a track of these IP addresses. Now we took a model class, which is of a log table. If it's required in future that I have to keep the log table in my database, I will create all these uh, columns in my database and send these items to the database as well. So that can also keep a track of uh, the logs in my database. Next what? Next, we have this string content root path. This is another variable which is catching the web host environment dot content root path. One was uh, at the beginning here and then we have this one. Okay, so uh, this one will uh, keep a track of uh, the web host environment that is captured. Now from that one, we will uh, we will uh, keep our, our logs folder and a logs dot txt file. Okay. So let's say it's logs, okay, logs.txt. Now what next? We have another variable which is uh, of a new object uh, for logger confirmation dot write dot to file path, whatever file path is written, it is going to write that dot create logger. This one will create a log and this log dot information, this will write the things into your text file, okay? So this uh, return I'm not using anywhere, but uh, it's just returning uh, value, whatever. So if I want to keep this in a variable, I can uh, return that, but I don't need that. So this might be in case of, uh, no, we don't need that actually. No, that's not required. So we don't need to return. If I put this as a void also, it's it's uh, going to work fine. So let's run this application and see. Uh, so far, what I have showed, just a quick recap, I have a default home controller. I have uh, uh, these NuGet uh, packages installed. So 
code generation, serilog and serilog.sync.file, the latest versions. Uh, then in the we have a model class which is uh, keeping uh, these uh, things in track. So in case we require a database uh, table, we will uh, keep uh, we will use this one. Otherwise, it will just be helpful for us to uh, uh, write down the logs into the text file. Now let's run this application. Go to the login section and see. So beginning on the login home controller. Now running the application. So what we have is home slash login. Okay. Sorry that I have only two fields. So I'm using, uh, let's say, John uh, used to login, let's say, Abraham. And the password, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm using a default thing. Okay. Nothing much here. So just, uh, yeah, I will do a submit and I will uh, wait for these things to continue and uh, see that if it's generating my... Uh, files okay so what we are expecting is we will expect a log folder here and something inside it okay so let's continue with that one now this one will capture all my ip addresses whatever is my ip address it's going to capture those things okay after capturing my ip address it's going to uh, write the log path okay so the log path is already created now uh, the log, uh, yeah, the variable has already created all the log path things, and now I will do a continue. So that one is created now. Let's go to the folder and see. Okay, let's refresh this one. What? We don't have it. Okay, so previous one did not work for some reason. Now the second one worked like you can see that it has created a tilde symbol here. Uh, I couldn't figure out why it did not create this folder in the previously, and uh, but now it has. So yeah, probably it was uh, not expecting this. Uh, okay, this slash at the beginning. Yeah, I think so. Stop this, save it, reload the application. Yeah, though I have the file here, but I still want to show you that it creates a log folder. Okay, so here is the log file with the tilde symbol, but I don't want that tilde symbol. I just want uh, that uh, folder be created on the root path. So I will do it again and see what made the problem. Simply I'll do a continue and wait for it. I'm expecting a log folder. Okay, now you can see that it created a logs folder here and within the logs, I see this is the log file. Okay, for security reasons, I've, I'm uh, not going to show you the my IP address. So the IP addresses you can see here uh, that uh, the IP addresses are uh, written down on the log file and uh, the first two are uh, some IPv6 address so I had to mask them and the remaining two are my network and my internet address. Uh, so you can see that the host name is also came up the computer name and the username is uh, Abram. The module is dpw which was hard written and uh, you can see that the remark says that it's a login kind of entry. So that says that uh, it's a entry which uh, has been confirmed with login and you can see the system date and time also mentioned there. So uh, uh, going back to the model class you can see that dpw is uh, hard coded and uh, remaining things has been uh, initialized properly and uh, if we go ahead and look at the design thing so i didn't do a much of a fancy thing here you can see just uh, the input type as a username and the password so and the submit button it uh, works on the form submit it goes to the action method and uh, does the operation so that was all about this video guys we will have couple of videos coming in until then stay tuned stay connected and happy coding thank you